fuckers really don't know what it's like to be crazy. You know, I, I literally thought that first Celsius that I had the other day was gonna put me together and it did for like 30 minutes. Step one of getting your life together when you're back in New York in America is getting a Celsius because they have these like cancer causing chemical injecting addictive crack cocaine things in the drinks that you and that's why you can't get them in Europe. So you go to Europe and you're like depressed because you can't get the crack cocaine addictive cancer causing cocaine chemicals and then you're like fuck what do I do well now I'm already feeling a lot better because I have the cancer causing cocaine crack coating chemicals <clears throat> and then I was like oh my god oh my god there is something so wrong with me well I know that but like it almost like distracts the fact so maybe once I get like halfway into this one it's like a drug like temporary relief is better than nothing that's why I snort cocaine on a daily basis <laughs> Anyways, I have laundry because I'm literally gross and disgusting. Gross, disgusting, filthy, messy, trash. La, la, la. This isn't even a vlog about me getting my life together now. Now I'm just complaining about everything. What the fuck is wrong with me? Okay. What's up guys? I'm in my new apartment. I'm really excited. I just moved in. This is it. It's really cute. There's not people walking around and shopping because I'm not in Ikea. I'm literally in my new apartment. I kind of have to be quiet because um, there's people visiting. But like, it looks really nice. It looks so beautiful. I love being a woman. Sometimes. Sometimes I love being a woman. Sometimes. Except when men exploit me for like sex. I feel like this isn't what the vlog is even about. <sighs> By the way, I got herpes like four months ago. I moved into my apartment yesterday and I was so fucking exhausted. Like I was literally delirious. I don't know if it was the fact that I've been forgetting to take my meds for the past couple days and I'm just like seeing stars or if it's because I know that's definitely why. That was definitely. This is what it's like being a girl. Bow, wow, wow. Sometimes, even after I'm completely moved in, my room will actually look like this because, um, you know, I'm just depressed. I went out with my ex situationship's friend the other night, like the one who I think gave me herpes. Well, not the friend, but the ex situation that gave me herpes and he exploited me for sex and made me feel like shit about myself. And then I went cuckoo crazy on him and I sent him some like really, really neat texts and now we don't talk. Anyways, I went out with his friend last night. I got so fucking drunk and then I made out with his friend. I, can you tell, like, <laughs> can you tell that I'm not acting as crazy today? It's like crazy isn't linear. Crazy is, you know, it's up and it's down and it's all over the place and it's, you know, it's just beautiful and special and I'm really sad for anyone who doesn't get to experience it. Seriously, I think about it all the time. How boring would life be if I just came out of the womb fucking normal? Or, you know, I don't think anyone's normal. I think everyone's fucking crazy. Reasons why I'm crazy, number one. I hate my mom. <laughs> Actually, that's not a reason why I'm crazy. That's the reason why she's fucking crazy. Like, well, I'm not going to tell you why she's crazy right now. I don't want to... We're not starting that yet. This vlog will just evolve until we tell you all of my deepest, darkest secrets. But you have to keep it between us. It's also time to take one of my, two of my pills. This morning we got this one and we just got like a supplement that I take with it because my doctor says it would be good for my brain. I haven't felt much of a difference, but the doctor tells you it's definitely true. Today I woke up shirtless because it's been crazy. So I don't know if this is a universal experience, Probably the fuck not. I do this thing sometimes where I will go through my Instagram story and block everyone. <laughs> Except like one person if I want them to see something that I don't want anyone else to see. So I took like a really sexy, like hot, like sexy <laughs> picture of myself, like covering my tits. And then I locked everyone but my ex situation ship. It says, say yes to heaven. And it's just me looking hot. <laughs> and then I posted some Lana lyrics that I thought like, you know. It takes me so long too to go through and block everyone. So the fact that I even do that is Absolutely fucking bonkers. I don't care. Like I love it. Like I love doing that shit 
Now it's time to talk about my shroom trip, I guess. I've been at this like really weird <laughs> place with the universe. It's like feeling lost in like my storytelling. Why have I been feeling this resistance to like creativity? Because like that's like literally the one thing keeping me going right now. But I, I think in this shroom trip, I've found meaning in that. I think the only way is like through. You document the confusion, document the messiness. That's the angle. I've been trying to make a vlog kind of about the making of the show, but I think this is it. It's like, there's no show without this, <laughs> without my own mental health. And it's like, at what cost? Literally before that trip, I was like not feeling motivated creatively. Not only am I go undergoing this like insane processing of trauma right now, like, there's just so much uncertainty in my life and I am losing friends. I am not really making more friends and I don't really want to make more friends right now. I feel like I'm really stuck with like two to three really close friends. <laughs> it's been a rough day. I just don't feel like I'm capable of making anything good which sucks because the idea is awesome and i just don't feel capable of being the person to do it right now anymore right i guess at this very second when i know it's gonna pass like i felt like this at times already in the journey and it's always passed but you know you're starting to like fall back into a little bit of a depression when it's 7 p.m and you want to go to bed already um, because that just means that you don't want to be awake anymore or have to think about your life. And uh, you ever just like look at people on the street and be like, I wish it was you, anyone. I remember in the height, height, height of my depression, I would look at people and just be like, I would give anything, anything to swap a life right now. Because it's like, you don't want to be dead, but it's like, you don't want to be you socks it's raining <laughs> one of the most <laughs> complicated parts of making this show is that it's like it's like not just about me trying to make some viral series or just like be crazy on the internet for attention. This is my story. I know people don't get that or people don't see it for a lot of reasons and it's and like my story is complicated and it's like hard to understand and like I know people won't get it until it's explained by me and I'm not like ready to do that yet but like a lot of this is just me trying to like heal like heal my family importantly my family like was <laughs> this show is so reminiscent of like a lot of what i went through and like i look at my family now that i'm 22 and have been moved out for like, a couple years I just like never had that family that i wanted like a family <laughs> like i just felt so alone so much of my my upbringing my brothers and i like we went through so much but we weren't close the show was already made me and my middle brother closer i just like hope eventually will like, resonate with like <laughs> my oldest brother because <laughs> just like watching like everything that he's went through has been like, heartbreaking for me it's just like so hard to watch how like other people's action have fucked him and have like fucked me and our family and our ability to have a relationship or just live our lives and, like <laughs> just like the unacknowledgement of uh, how someone can be so oblivious to like how their problems just fucked me for like the the rest of my life and it's like given me a lot of like, sensitivity and empathy and things i am so grateful for because i don't know how many other humans have the same perspective on life that i was like given through everything and like i don't think i would change it because like in some for some reason i like love this like i love <laughs> i'm so grateful that i am one of those people who is like been given the resources to like fully heal i look at someone like my brother and i'm like it could have been that like it could have been stuck and had my mental health just completely derail my life when he deserves so much 
so much more. He's such a good person. Like, I hate that. <laughs> I hate what my mom's like doing to him. I don't know if she's even aware. I just hate that this is like a system that's ruining lives. <laughs> and just to fuck to me and my family. I just hope that I can hopefully bring us back together or something before like I don't know, maybe there's no time. I don't know. Like with everything I've been through, it's just... <laughs> it's so important to me. I'm just like thinking about how... I don't know, I guess I'm in such a time of need and I feel like the show has driven me away from a lot of people just like because of their lack of understanding or lack of awareness of how much it like really affects me. I had no idea what the show meant to me until, until I realized like it, it just, just kind of something that came out of me like very unconsciously it's like there's no part of me that like wants to stop or give up there's like not an option but it's just like hard i feel like there's no chance i can give up until like i tell my fucking until i tell my story <laughs> so anyways <laughs> I lost my cameraman lost my studio I don't want to like keep going <laughs>